Good morning, beautiful Ridge family. This is Mrs. Harold. Founders Day is always a highlight in our annual calendar. And the format for last year's Founders Day was certainly a first. Remember the Zoom party with families dancing in their living rooms and kitchens? That memory still brings a smile to my face. Sadly, COVID is very much part of our lives. And now a whole year later, is still the reason that we can't be together in person today. This Founders Day is memorable for different reasons. It will be the first one for all our new grade nought boys and their families and any other boy that joined us in the last year. And it's also the last Founders Day officially for two very special men, Mr. Deanna, and Mr. Stanley. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for all the passion and enthusiasm and dedication and care you have both invested in the Ridge School. We wish you both the very, very best in the next exciting adventure of your journey. So many people in our beautiful country have experienced deep loss and sadness over the last 12 months. So it's fitting to launch into this Founders Day program with a wish well. So I invite you to think of somebody, either an individual or a group of people that need some extra love right now. And wherever you are, put your hands on your hearts and let's take a deep breath and send love out into the world from our hearts. Boys, we may not have giant inflatables on the Cheels field, but our Ridge boys have giant hearts. Happy 102nd birthday, beautiful Ridge School family. everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. Right, thank you, uh, Mrs. Harold, for a lovely welcome, and um, and welcome to everybody out there. Welcome, mums and dads, if you're tuning in. Welcome to members of staff, and uh, more particularly, welcome to our boys on this Founders' Day. Uh, now, understandably, guys, you'll remember that Founders' Day, or at least most of you, I take it, will remember that Founders' Day 
is a day set aside in the, in the middle of the year, strangely enough, not at the end of the year, but in the middle of the year, it's set aside for us to remember founders, to remember everything that's gone before, so many people who have played a part in the life of our school and have given us through their hard work and through their industry and so much that they have provided into the life of the school. They've given us the school that we have today. And so it's a time when we can look back and give thanks. And we often also have a time where we as a family gather and as a school family and we celebrate. Uh, and we did that so well uh, in Centenary. Some of you and many of you, in fact, who were here during the Centenary, you will remember that and you remember the celebration. Sadly, very sadly, last year and then again this year, we haven't been able to do quite the same thing. And so Founders Day is limited to being virtual in this space online. And uh, it's, it's a sadness. But nonetheless, we need to take time to celebrate, uh, to give thanks, to remember uh, and to offer our thanks to God for all that he continues to do to empower us and to present uh, a school that is, is so worthy of so much at the moment. Okay, so what is my message for you today? Uh, my message is going to be focused on the word hope. And uh, I'm going to try and dress that up, if you want, um, in a way that you can understand. And I'm going to use our school mascot, uh, Ridgie just to sort of pave the way to help us to understand something of what I'm getting at here. Now, Reggie came visiting uh, at the grade naught 100 day party just uh, a few days ago, and then he was back at the beginning of term, um, certainly in the, uh, the Wilston par car park, and uh, it was lovely to have him there and it was good to, to see him back again. He had been on his journeys around the world in the last 18 months. Uh, and whatever your take on Reggie is, and some of you will have a different understanding uh, of, of who and what Reggie is, uh, the focus is very much on the eagle. Uh, my focus is on the eagle and what the eagle represents for us um, at this time. And for me, the, the eagle as um, a symbol of hope is, is something pretty profound for us right now. Now, around the world and through the ages, eagles have been considered to be um, symbols of incredible power and majesty by governments, by royalty, um, by emperors, and by common people in the street like you and me. So what is it about an eagle, this magnificent creature? Um, I consider to be here in South Africa, the lord of the African skies. No bird, and I'm a birder, no bird com comes close to the eagle. Um, and we've got many different types of eagles uh, who are uh, part of the, the skies above us, and particularly in the Kruger National Park and other places. So what is it about the eagle that really generates, for me, excitement and focuses attention on hope? I'm going to take you for a journey, just two minutes, and it's a journey um, where we're able to very, very quietly uh, enjoy being um, in flight with an eagle. And uh, I want you to, to come with me in a moment or two as we get on the back of a golden eagle um, and as we fly off from the tallest building in the world. It's in Dubai, the Burj Khalifa. And this bird was released, a beautiful female golden eagle, magnificent creature, was released from the very top. That's over 800 meters high. And uh, it was released to find its trainer way down in the city of Dubai. And for two minutes, we'll go for a ride on the back of this eagle. So let's have that ride, and then I'll come back and we'll chat again.
Okay, so how was that? Did you enjoy that? Obviously, there was a camera that was set on the back of the eagle, and uh, we were able to visualize what it's like to have our wings stretched wide and to be able to search as the eagle was searching from way up in the sky as it tried to find its trainer so far down below. How does it do that? That is incredible. I mean, what eyesight an, e an eagle must have, and it does have, but it's got a whole lot more than that. And so one, one, uh, what I'd like to share with you now are, are five um, important components of what I believe the eagle offers us here at the Ridge right now that adds up to that word hope again. The first is perspective. And perspective is something that the eagle has the very nature of the way that the eagle is able to soar up into the clouds and up into the sky and have a perspective far beyond anything that we could have unless we happen to be in an airplane ourselves. So perspective is something that's given when you're above the earth and you're looking down and you're looking at um, things in the, in the far distance. So the eagle has perspective as part of its makeup. It then has power. That's built into everything that an eagle is about from its talons to its huge beak, uh, to its massive wingspan, it has power. And the way that God has designed it and it's been dressed up by nature, it is an incredibly powerful beast. And so the eagle has power. And that also comes into that word hope. Then there's precision. And precision is something that comes from its eyesight. And you'll notice in the slide that I'm showing you here, a martial eagle staring out into the distance. Now that eyesight is over a hundred times more powerful, telescopically more powerful than any human being. And that provides it with something to focus in on and it gives it a target that it can home in on when it's looking for prey. And remember, these are the apex predators, the apex aerial predators when they're looking for prey and they're incredible hunters. So that's the third one. The fourth one is potential. And an eagle has, from the very time that it comes out of the egg, it has the potential to be something magnificent. But it's got to realize that potential by flapping its wings and taking off and then soaring into the sky and receiving through its wings and through the power in its body everything that that potential will allow it to achieve as this magnificent beast. And then finally, the last one is purpose. And... God, again, I believe, uh, and nature has created in such a way that it's purposed to be the type of uh, creature that it is. Uh, and it is a, a predator of note. It's magnificent um, in the way that it soars into the clouds and into the sky. Um, but it's, it's recognized within the makeup of what, what makes an eagle what it is, that it's purposed for something special. It's purposed to be the kind of creature that it is, and it realizes that. And it's able to use that recognition to be able to take it further. So now let me focus back on the Ridge School. Focus back on that eagle again. And remember our eagle quad. Remember that beautiful bird that stands there um, in the quad and, and looks down on the gathering of boys when we line up in the mornings. That's pretty significant for me. And it's significant in this day and age. And, and given what we are coping with right now as, as human beings and people, that we need to take that word hope and make something of it and hope within the context of who we are. Now, remember that an eagle doesn't just simply get out of its egg, egg and, and, and fly off and, and soar into the clouds. It has to learn about that. So from the time it's a chick to becoming a fledgling to becoming a subadult and then a fully grown bird, uh, it has to learn the ropes. And so an eagle has to learn how to fly. It has to be patient to do that. And it takes many months for an eagle to become a sub-adult and then on to becoming a full uh, eagle that can look after itself. And, and that's where I want to focus just for a moment, you guys, because that's what the ridge is about. We are your nest. With your parents, we provide that cocoon of safety, that place where you can receive, as the eagle receives, everything that makes it what it is. And you guys as youngsters are in a place to be able to receive as young, young fledglings, if you want, what you need to become young adults and then eventually adults in the world beyond. And so those words that I've mentioned to you, those five categories that I've mentioned to you in the context of the eagle, those all apply in the context of this school and what we are offering you right now. Now in the, the verse, the fourth verse of 
the, uh, the school song. It says, like eagles high above, uh, you're able to stretch your wings. And, and the actual wording I'll read to you, then like eagles high above, we will reach the bright blue sky, keeping in our hearts a love for the ridge where we all learn to fly. And this is the place, guys, where you are learning to fly. And as you learn to fly, it gives you the potential, gives you the perspective, gives you the purpose, gives you the precision and everything that you need to be able to become the young men that can make a difference in the world out there. And that's hope. Hope is built into the very fabric of who you are as young people. God has designed every one of you as something absolutely special and beautiful. And that uniqueness, therein lies the hope. Therein lies the potential and the things that we can look to, forward to as we, as we, we relief you, you release you into the world beyond to become the young men that you need to become. So as the eagle soars into the sky and has the perspective to see the world that is out there for it. So you guys can soar with your wings symbolically that we have given you, that you take on to senior school and to university beyond and to the world beyond that. And you can use those wings to become the people that you need to be. Guys, I've, the last slide that you'll see in front of you now is a slide that is the, the verse for today or the verse from today that is probably my most favorite verses of the Bible. Isaiah 40 verses 28 to 31. And it goes like this. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run. They will not grow weary. They will walk and they will not be faint. Guys, thank you for listening. And to each one of you, I commission God's strength into your lives. Go on. Stretch your wings, use your potential, know that you are purpose for something special and go out there and be young men in the future who can lead and who can make a difference. God bless you all. Thanks for listening.
You're hopeless for life on Africa, and you'll not be right again. Until you can watch the settings and hear the jackals bark, and know they are around you, waiting in the dark. When you long to see the elephants or hear the cuckoo's song, when the moonlight sets your blood on fire, then you've been away too long. It's time to cut the traces loose and let your heart go free. Beyond the far horizon, your spirit learns to be. Africa is waiting, come sit here, touch the open sky, and learn to love the rustling grass and the wild fish eagles cry. You'll always hunger for the bush and the lion's rustling roar to camp at last beneath the stars and to be at peace once more. Baba wetu ose zulini. Si abonga ngogusipa impilo enje. Si kele gube nyo tando gane ngogutula e Afrika. Usisa iskolo setu. Usisa izwe letu. Bonke loku si gutela e kameni kuga jesu. Amen. Unse vader, wat in die hemele is, laat u naam geheilig word. Laat u koning kreik Kom, laat u wil geskiet, soos in die hemel, net so ook op die aarde. Gee ons vandag ons dagslikke brood en vergeef ons ons skulde, soos ons ook ons skuldenaars vergewe. En lei ons nie in versoeking nie, maar verloos ons van die bose. Want aan u behoort die koninkryk en die kracht en die heerlijkheid tot in eeuwigheid. Amen. Good morning, Rich family, and welcome to this special day. I'm fully aware that this is not how we're supposed to be spending our Founders Day. We should have joined in unison singing the Rich School song, dancing to the majestic sounds of our marimba band, high-fiving Reggie, and giving thanks for the SAS school and all that it provides. I can picture little boys sitting on their fidgety hands, awaiting to be dismissed from the service. I'm sure we can't forget the mad rush to get to Chelsfield to play the role as striker or defender in a giant foosball game. To meet up with old boys, chat with past teachers, and bring the past and present together. But as Winston Churchill once said, we can't waste a good crisis. And so here we are, 102 years later, still celebrating our school's birthday, albeit online. What we can't forget is the importance of what Founders Day is all about, our community. A celebrated day like this brings young and old, past and present, and our diverse range of cultures together to celebrate a day that we are all proud of and proud to be a part of. And so you will be watching this recording from the comfort of your couch or sitting in a class with friends and teachers, reminiscing about what it could have been. But I would like to conclude this 2021 Founders Day message by saying that we are who we are because of others. Ubuntu plays a vital role as to why we are able to celebrate our 102nd Founders Day. Even though it feels as if we have missed the festivities of such an important day, we still have the ability to celebrate it together. In conclusion, I would like to draw your attention to the significance of this specific Founders Day. For some, it is their last birthday celebration with a rich school, whereby they'll be passing on the baton to others to create a new chapter and a new story for our beautiful school. For, for others, the expectation of what our future Founders Days could entail. But most importantly, on this, our school's birthday, let's not forget to sing Happy Birthday, make a wish, and blow out the candles. Merci. 